Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Daphne and I make videos on DIYs and home decor. And today's video is super exciting because it is another IKEA Kallax hack. And you guys, my previous IKEA Kallax hack where I transformed it into a kitchen island went viral. That was my eighth video. I still didn't know what I was doing in terms of filming or editing. In fact, I'm still learning all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video just as much. And as you guys can see by the title, in this video, I will be transforming the Calyx unit into an industrial style cabinet. I'm also really excited to announce that today's video is sponsored by Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is an ethical jewelry brand. I've been wearing their jewelry for a while now and I absolutely love it. They're so pretty and elegant. I got these Vivi earrings that I absolutely love. I've never had hoops before and I thought I'd treat myself to something different. Wise decision. And I also got the Sylvia necklace set, which honestly I was dying to get because I love layered necklaces. My mom thought they represent the sun and the moon and I can just not unsee it ever since. But apart from their beautiful designs, what really drew me in are three key points. The first is their sustainability mission. So they offset 100% of their carbon emissions this means that for all the CO2 they produce from start to finish, it all has to be counterbalanced with the same amount of oxygen. They're committed to using recycled materials whenever possible and their jewelry come in those super cute reusable pouches, which I find are a great idea because unlike a little box, you can carry that in your bag and use it for your hand sanitizer or your earbuds. The second key point is their ethical working practices. So on Ana Luisa's website, you can find transparent reports on their manufacturing partners. So for example, you can see their employees work in hours, if they get paid overtime, what are their benefits, etc. I think this is a great addition on their website because it's one thing to be told a company is ethical and another thing to actually see proof of it. And the third and final key point is that all their jewelry pieces are hypoallergenic, which is super important to me because I suffer from eczema and jewelry can often irritate my skin, but I've been wearing their jewelry for about a month now and I haven't had a single breakout. On top of that, they offer worldwide express shipping, one year warranty, and and their prices start as low as 39 euros, which I think is great considering their high quality, but they can also go up to more higher end prices. So there's definitely something for everybody. So make sure to check out Ana Luisa. They also gave me a code to share with you guys for 10% off. The code is Daphne Campani 10. You can add it at checkout or purchase through the link in the description box. Now let's get into a few more details about today's project. So we found this Calyx unit for 50% off at IKEA's discount section. That's because it's damaged in some areas. And in order to turn it into a cabinet, I will be adding a backboard, two panel doors, and I will also be adding legs to elevate it a little bit. Now, I definitely want to throw a little bit of my own personal touch on this design, so I will be adding barrel up on the doors. This probably doesn't come as a surprise because you've seen the thumbnail. Now, I decided to use MDF for the back panel on the doors because that was the cheapest option, but I'd never worked with MDF before and from other vlogs and videos that I'd seen, it seemed to be a little bit tricky to work with. So I will talk you through the entire process as well as painting IKEA furniture because it wasn't as intimidating as I thought it would be. Now, now I asked at the store to cut the MDF for me and the dimensions for the back panel are 7 to 6.5 by 7 to 6.5 centimeters and for the two doors are 7 to 6.5 by 38.3 centimeters. All the dimensions and products used in this video will be added in the description box. So without further ado, let's jump into today's DIY. So my first step is to prepare the MDF for painting and to start with I am double checking that I have the right dimensions for the panel doors so I am carefully placing each panel where I will be attaching it later on and I am marking any excess width or height with a pencil. After I was done with the panel doors, I did exactly the same thing for the back panel. And I ended up having a few extra millimeters that I had to shorten them by. So my next step was to sand everything and keep in mind that MDF can be quite dangerous if inhaled. So make sure to use the appropriate protective equipment. A mask and glasses are a must and I would highly suggest using gloves as well. 
So I sanded all three panels with a 120 grit sandpaper and I also made sure to sand the sides as well. My initial thought was to shorten the sides using an 80 grit sandpaper, but it actually took me quite a while to sand a few millimeters. So for the panel doors, I will be using a planer as you'll see in a second. And when I was done sanding each piece, I wiped it clean with a damp cloth. Make sure it is damp and not wet because MDF is an incredibly porous material that soaks up paint and moisture very quickly. And in that case, it might cause your MDF to expand. So as I mentioned earlier, I ended up using a planer to shorten the panel doors and that definitely sped up the process. Alex gave me a hand because he has more experience using a planer, but if you don't have one, you can of course use a coarse sandpaper. It's just going to take a little bit longer or at least it did in my case. When I brought each panel door down to the correct dimensions, I sanded both sides with a 120 grit sandpaper wiped off the dust and also wiped it clean with a damp cloth. For the calyx unit, I am first removing the hardware that is for mounting it on the wall. They were attached when I bought the unit, but since this is becoming a cabinet, I will not be needing those. And then I went ahead and added some wood filler on the screw heads. Once the wood filler was dry, I lightly sanded the unit with a 120 grit sandpaper. Laminate surfaces are very smooth and because of their non-porous nature, they have zero grip. So sanding before priming is essential in order to create some grip for the primer to stick to. And just like I did with the panels, once I had sanded the unit, I brushed off any dust, wiped it clean with a damp cloth, and now I'm ready for priming. When working with both MDF and laminate surfaces, using the right primer is a must. I am using the Benjamin Moore Fresh Start Eco Primer, but if you can get your hands to the Zinser Bin Shellac Based Primer, I would highly suggest you use that one. I couldn't find it anywhere in Cyprus. In fact, they didn't even know what a shellac based primer was. And the good thing about that primer is that you can use it for both MDF and laminate surfaces. The one I am using is also good for these surfaces, but it is acrylic based and I personally would have preferred a shellac based one because I think it would adhere better. Another thing to keep in mind when painting MDF is that it's a good idea to prime both sides because the porousness of MDF means that paint can easily seep through to the other side of the material. So you can prevent this from happening by applying a couple of coats of primer to the other side of the MDF, even if you're not painting that side. It is also recommended to apply at least two to three layers of primer. I ended up applying three, although I think I could have gotten away with two. And by the way, I'm using a foam roller to apply it and I also sand lightly with a 220 grit sandpaper between coats because that enables paint to adhere better and it also creates a smoother result. And yeah, I do that every time in between coats, both for primer and color paint. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that day the weather was all over the place. When I started painting, it was so sunny and hot that everything dried within minutes, but it started to rain heavily after a while, so I moved everything in the garage until the rain had stopped, and then I brought everything back out again. But yeah, some layers were applied in the garage, as you guys can tell. Now, for the Calyx unit, the process was very straightforward. I applied my primer on the areas I will be painting later on and by the way I will not be painting the interior so I applied a total of two coats of primer and of course sanded between coats as well. For paint, I am using the Sherwin-Williams Trichrome Black in Satin Finish and I painted both sides of the panel doors using a foam roller 
but since I am not painting the interior, there was no reason for me to paint both sides of the back panel, so I only painted one side and left the other side as is with the white primer. I applied a total of three layers, both on the panels and the Kallax unit. I find that's always the case with dark colors and I made sure to sand between coats for a smoother finish. To create my design on the doors, I first placed the wooden boards on one of the panel doors to measure the burlap. I wanted the burlap to cover half of the door, so its dimensions are around 38.3 by 38.3 centimeters. And then using the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch in black, I spray painted the burlap and I only sprayed one side. Once the burlap was dry, I attached it on the panel door. I tried to attach it with wood glue, but that didn't work, so I used a stapler instead. I was a little bit hesitant to use the stapler because I was afraid there would be a tiny gap between the staple and the wooden board, but it actually didn't, so that worked perfectly. Before attaching the pine boards, I gave them a quick sanding with a 120 grit sandpaper. And as with the MDF boards, I asked at Leroy Merlin to cut the pine boards for me. The dimensions are 76.5 by 3.9 centimeters for the long ones and around 30.5 by 3.9 centimeters for the short ones. I will be using four long ones and eight short ones. Unfortunately, I gave the person who cut the boards for me the wrong dimensions for the shorter ones and he cut them a centimeter too short, but that was entirely my fault. So I am attaching the boards with some wood super glue first and I'm also using some clamps to make sure it adheres properly. In terms of where I attached the two middle boards, I used the top one to cover the ends of the burlap and the lower one in between that lower section. And I also used some nails on either side of each board for extra security. And I used an extra nail in the middle of each of the longer ones. Then I applied quite a bit of wood filler to fill the connections and because my shorter pieces were a little bit too short, I had to use a bit extra than I normally would. Once the wood filler was dry, I sanded it with a 120 grit sandpaper to create a smooth surface, wiped it clean with a clean cloth and now I am ready for painting the boards. To prime the pine boards, I used the Luxence Undercoat Primer for wood in white color, and I used a small flat brush for the inner and outer edges. It did take a while and it would have definitely been much quicker to use tape, but I wasn't convinced that when I removed the tape, it wouldn't remove the color underneath. So I freehanded it. I used one coat of primer and three coats of the same black paint I used on the MDF and the Calyx unit. I did end up painting the burlap and the MDF with undercoat and paint. So to cover that, I spray painted the burlap off camera between the first and second coat of black paint. And yes, some of it did go on the pine boards, but since I applied two more coats, I covered that with paint. As for the MDF, I applied an extra coat of paint using the flat brush, and because I was sanding between coats and it got really messy, 
I did that at the very end and once I touched up everything, it looked really, really good. Now I am finally ready to start assembling the cabinet. I am starting with the back panel, which I am placing on the Calyx. And once I was happy with the alignment, I drilled a hole with the smallest drill bit to enable the screws going in. And I opened three holes on each side, leaving about the same distance between them. And then I added the screws. I found these black metallic legs at Leroy Merlin and thought these are perfect for the vibe I am going for, so I attached them on the bottom of the cat legs. Now one thing to keep in mind is that most IKEA furniture are made out of compressed wood, so the screws have nothing to grip onto, but they do stay in place, at least I've never had any issues. To attach the doors, I will be using two hinges for each door and to match the vibe, I spray painted them black with the same Rust-Oleum spray paint I used on the burlap. So once they were dry, I went ahead and attached them about 15 centimeters in on either side of each panel door and then Alex helped me attach it on the Calyx unit. Okay, so these are the doorknobs that I chose for the cabinet. I think they're so pretty and I think they match the legs perfectly because both of them are metallic and I want to attach them either here or here but I think for practical reasons it's better if they're here so we'll be attaching them there I've got the cabinet ready and set up. You guys, it turned out really, really good. Let's do a reveal in three, two, one. And that, you guys, was my IKEA Calyx hack. I personally think it turned out so good, especially considering I've never made panel doors or painted neither MDF nor IKEA furniture before. And although I would have never chosen to create an industrial style cabinet for my home, I think it turned out very pretty. And I love how the burlap sort of breaks the harshness of the design and creates some texture and also something visually interesting to look at. I definitely went out of my comfort zone for this project, but it was also really exciting to create something different. So this cabinet will be going to Alex's new store, which is industrial style. I think it turned into a great piece and why do I think it looks really high end? So let me know what you guys think about this IKEA hack in the comment section down below. I think it took me three to four days to complete this project and it cost me a total of 60 euros. But to be honest, I did have some of the materials already. So if you liked today's video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home decor and DIY content and also click on the notification bell to get notified whenever a new video comes out. Once again, a massive thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. This is honestly a dream come true because I love Ana Luisa and I hope you guys enjoy their pieces as much as I do. So definitely check out their products. They do have something for everybody. And also click the link in the description box to get 10% off of your entire order or type my code Daphne Campani 10 at checkout. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.